All right, thanks for joining us here for part two on the uh, emergency bag thoughts. Um, so if you haven't seen part one yet, go back, watch that. Sorry it's long, but um, there's a lot of stuff that kind of got into. Uh, a lot of the contents are the same, really. You know, we're just kind of adding to it mostly for the winter bags. So um, versus rehashing everything that was in part one, just go back, watch that. Uh, and if you have questions, you know, just, just comment below and, and we'll try and try and answer them for you. Um, so jumping right into it, right? So here's that Rush 72 bag I talked about before. This is the summer bag, which works out fine three seasons when you're, you're carrying a little bit less stuff. Larger bag here, this is a Marine Corps surplus ILBE pack. Um, both of these were just kind of available and, and reasonably priced, um, you know, for what they are. So uh, I think these have gone up in, in, in price. They're maybe a little bit harder to get now. Uh, this is by no means the only bag that's out there, but it was just kind of a, a big, rugged um, frame pack. Pretty pretty darn comfortable, to be honest. And then, you know, being surplus, you could, you could get them for a reasonable price. But, you know, if you've got something you're happy with, um, go with that instead, by all means. So one of the downsides to the ILBE pack and, and packs of this style, it's not fair to say that it's a downside of this specific pack, is just that the, the larger packs like this are going to have less organization built into them, right? So, so the, the Rush 72 pack, you had, you had two compartments on the side, you had this super organized um, outside panel, you had room behind it to tuck stuff in, you had organization here, you had a separate pocket here, and then within the main compartment of the pack, there were like four different dividers in there as well. That's cool for being able to lay out where all your stuff goes. You know, your water kit goes one place, your fire kit goes another, your cordage and knives and tools go somewhere else, your batteries and illumination. So that kind of disappears when you go into um, a larger pack like the ILBE. So this is basically like a one compartment pack um, that has an organizer, an organizing panel on the top of it. Um, and then most of your small stuff's going to go in, into the top here. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this one doesn't even have a zippered compartment on the bottom. Sometimes they do, depends on the pack you go with. So with this being a, 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 a more cavernous, you know, single, single um, compartment pack, you got just got to be a little bit smarter in how you stage and organize your gear and, and stuff sacks and, and divider packs, bags, stuff like that are, are a good way to do that. So I'm going to show a little bit of that here in a minute. Uh, but basically, right, so the, the way that a pack like this works, you've got uh, your 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 main compartment, your lid, right? and then you've got this big old tunnel right, for the main body of the pack. And you compress it with these compression straps on the side. This is nice in the sense that you do have some side access zippers, um, you know, for getting into it from the side instead of having to go straight down through the top. Um, but you've got this, you know, main compartment here. There are water bottle, basically, you know, uh, spots on the side. I'll show that a little bit later. Um, but, but basically, organizing this is going to be up to you. So the way that I kind of lay this out, right, to start with, um, and this, you know, pack's covered in molly, so good for adding pouches. What I've got in this stuff sack here, this is a, uh, this is basically a 20 degree military surplus patrol bag, and this is a waterproof, this is a waterproof stuff sack. So. Um, this will actually keep it a little bit compressed in storage, right? Some air has gotten into it and I can, I can kind of purge that air out and show you guys, you know, you can get a little bit more out of this. So I'll compress it down a little further, put some weight on top of it, and then some of that weight might help hold it a little bit more compressed. Basically when you're storing stuff, you know, administratively in your basement, whatever, don't store it compressed. You wanna, you wanna leave the air in it as best you can when you're keeping it compressed in a pack, yeah, get it as small as you can, All right? So this is uh, this is the surplus 20 degree bag. This by itself is not enough. So I'm gonna add that that, that snug pack jungle blanket to it to increase the warmth of it. Um, this particular sleeping bag is synthetic and I want synthetic for this application, right? Where I'm not uh, recreationally camping and right? I can't just go home if my sleeping bag gets wet um, you know, I'm not staying at a lodge with a, you know, a, a roof over my head. Um, this should be kind of my worst case scenario bag. And if, if down gets wet, it is effectively useless for sleeping inside of. Synthetic will still hold some loft. It'll still hold some heat. It's not going to be a fun night, um, but it's, it's a lot better than, it's a lot better than the alternative. So I want, I want a synthetic bag, um, and I want synthetic fibers really, and outside of wool, um, which is what this blanket is. This is a wool blanket that's down um, for filming the video. This is something that I keep in the truck as well. 
not to tangent, but, um, you know, a lot of uses for this, throwing it over the top of stuff, uh, you know, prying eyes, whether it's high value stuff or firearm stuff that's in your vehicle, going on a picnic with the family, you want to throw something down, you know, on the ground, sitting on metal bleachers at a sports ball game, like whatever, like good thing to have in your car. Um, anyway, so wool is a good fiber, synthetic, really, if you're going to have a sleeping bag, it, it should be a synthetic fiber. So with this being a waterproof stuff sack, Right. I can take this and just drop it right in the bottom of the bag. Right. I don't need a sleeping bag quickly. I need a sleeping bag at the end of my day, right? Whenever, whatever scheduling I'm doing, whether I'm moving at night or moving during the day, that's kind of the last thing that I'm getting for. Um, I'm going to be reaching for while I'm on the move. So having the least convenient access works for me. Because it's in its own waterproof stuff sack, I don't have to have that inside of a waterproof bag itself. And I don't have to have a pack cover that's waterproof either, right? So that's why I recommend splurging, getting a waterproof stuff sack for your sleeping bag. After that's in, if there's something else that can be, um, uh, that, that doesn't need to be waterproofed as well, right next to it's a good spot for it. So thinking about that, right, an emergency blanket. This doesn't need to be waterproofed. My tarp, that's, that's my shelter. This doesn't need to be waterproofed. So these are things that can go right down in the bottom as well, right? And I'm going to make use of that space that's down there in the base of the pack the best that I can um, to fill those voids in. And then I'm going to compress everything basically down around it. I don't want this taller than it needs to be. I don't want it bigger than it needs to be. So just use the space intelligently. Um, and the stuff that you need the least quickly, drive it to the bottom. So there might be some other stuff. I'll, I'll kind of pack in around that later. But the, the reason that I was kind of getting that set up, all right, is... The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these 55 gallon drum liners, right? This is a three mil, relatively heavy weight, um, you know, drum liner and it's oversized, right? It's, 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 it's a lot more, it's a lot more space than I need it to be, which is good. What I'm going to do is use this to basically waterproof everything else that's going into this pack. So I'm going to take this bag and, and line the pack with it. So having that big, hearty, extra top to bag, um, what that allows me to do, right, I don't need to make this submersible proof. Like I don't need to tie this or, or tape it shut at the top. I can just gooseneck it, roll it over, fold it, and this will be safe from any kind of driving rain that's out there, right? So I don't have to shop for a waterproof pack. I don't have to worry about a pack liner that can get wet from the inside because the because the part that's against your back gets wet. I basically am I'm writing off the body, the pack itself is getting wet if it needs to get wet. But the stuff that needs to stay dry can stay dry inside of the main cavity of this pack. So I'm gonna put this to the side and just start kind of going through some of those stuff. So the snug the snug pack jungle blanket, this is not a waterproof storage sack. If I wanted to put this inside of a waterproof container itself, maybe I could put it outside. But as it is, it's not, so that's gonna go right in the bottom. Um, extra, extra socks, uh, change underwear, long, uh, short sleeve shirt, uh, long sleeve shirt. And so this, this is a long sleeve shirt. I want to have, this is a little bit of, about what direction you're going and where you are. It's, I think it's smart to have both tactical and non-tactical looking items, right? Um, I don't want everything I have to be multicam and scare the shit out of somebody if, if you're walking through town or whatever, right? It helps to be able to hide a natural environment, whatever your natural environment and season might be, and it helps to blend in a lot too. So have a little bit of, you know, some dual purpose stuff that's in there. Honestly, um, you know, some of this camo pattern stuff is, is getting to be a little bit more mainstream right now. Um, an example I'll, I'll give you of that, you know, um, holiday shopping, uh, saw some sponsored ads. Old Navy, you know, has camo handkerchiefs. They were blowing out for like a dollar or two a piece. I was like, you know what? Sure, I'll throw one of these in the pack. Um, so to drape over top of something, um, to use it kind of as like an impromptu, um, you know, scarf, face mask, whatever. Um, it's just kind of a multi-purpose thing. Um, one of the things I really like uh, handkerchiefs and stuff like that for is grabbing stuff that's hot. You know, if I'm grabbing something off of the fire or whatever, uh, I'm not going to carry a pot holder in my emergency bag. Uh, a handkerchief though, super multi-purpose. Anyway, um, so with camo patterns kind of coming into to more acceptable 
maybe you know you can dual purpose it a little bit you know here's another fashion brand that had a, a really inexpensive camo insulated winter jacket i think this was less than 30 bucks um and so here is an emergency winter jacket right that i'll throw in that pack it'll live in my truck and if i ever get cold i can run and grab grab this but i also have it for my worst case scenario back here too being in a camo pattern yeah not the worst um so all those things you know pack it a little bit more diligently specifically later uh winter time long underwear um here's a long sleeve shirt this was a military surplus i think it's a british pattern it's kind of like woodland but not i think it's called dpm um it was like 10 or 15 bucks cool yeah and it goes um this is stuff that i can basically hopefully never use it and i, I don't feel guilty about putting in a 300 dollars pair of cry pants um you know same thing surplus pair of uh, of woodland pants in they go um, this is something probably i have trouble finding these now this was a pair of soft shell pants uh magpul had on clothes out so this is uh you know <clears throat> winter time with the temperature being lower precipitation is usually frozen meaning it's a little bit harder to get wet and it's a lot easier to find dry firewood because everything's not saturated right snow is not soaking through stuff it's kind of sitting on top of it um soft shell can be uh, uh, way more useful in the winter time um, where you want to have a little bit more breathability when you're active still a little bit of protection from flurries or something like that and honestly you know even in a light rain these are these are pretty useful so in they'll go maybe that's overkill for you um maybe that'll be you know one of the first things that comes out if i run out of space but hey it's it's there for right now um clothing wise in addition to that i've got the poncho and i've got my my hard rain pants you could probably make a decision to not have those soft shell pants if, if you are having the rain pants um honestly if i've got the space and this stuff's just sitting in the truck it's gonna sit in the bag and I'll throw it out on the side of the road when I decide I'm, I'm done carrying it, right? Kind of adjust to the situation. But there's times maybe, you know, when tossing these over top of something while you're, uh, you know, doing something outdoors that is an emergency situation, having this stuff around is just great. Now these are things that can get wet, so they don't need to be inside of the plastic bag, right? So these are, I, these are this is an example of, with the pack organization, I'll just tuck that in outside. Of, of the plastic bag. So I can get to it from the side, you know, quickly and easily without compromising the waterproofing of everything else that's in there. My pack's filling up quick. Okay. Take this back off to the side. All right, sleeping related. Um, I don't have this in the summertime, I do in the wintertime. This is a three quarter length sleeping pad. Um, this isn't necessarily specifically just for comfort. You know, it's also for, for warmth. Sleeping on frozen ground is going to suck a lot of body heat out of you, and that's energy that you need. to you need. So this, for, for its weight, for its size, um, this is a no-brainer to me. This is something that I'll just kind of click on to the outside of the pack. It being Molly having those straps, I'll throw it on. If I've got the space inside of the pack, right, if I whittle down these contents enough, I can just shove it down the right or left side of the, of the compartment of the pack and, and use it and use it there. Um, I'm gonna blow through some stuff here pretty quick. Um, the, the, the folding saw we already talked about in the other video, that's coming with me. Um, the canteen cup cook set, that's coming with me. Here's the lid, I didn't show it to you guys before, but it's there. One of the things I mentioned to you before was when you're filling up your water bottles, don't fill them all the way because you don't want them to crack if frozen. It's not just theory, it actually works. That That's the same water bottle that was in the other video. I didn't add any water to it, it froze didn't damage the water bottle, right? Flexes a little bit, but there's enough give in it that nothing was, was damaged by that. So this is what I'm talking about. Leave a little bit of an air gap, you're gonna be okay. All right, uh, steel water bottle, same thing. Um, this was frozen as well. Didn't blow out the water bottle. Flexed it a little bit. Um, it's been flexed before, but don't fill it up all the way. All right, water bladder. That's going to go into, we'll start to talk a little bit organization coming up. Um, water filter set, that's the Sawyer Mini killer killer set. Um, compass, that's coming with. This kit I showed you guys before, same thing, just getting moved over. Food, here's the two meals that are getting moved over. I'm going to add more to it, 
sorry it's not in the video um headlamp so this runs on uh, just AAA batteries. It's got a high, medium, low, and a strobe mode. Um, this will run for a good long time. It, it's good to have, you know, your super tactical, face-melting, thousand lumen flashlight. But uh, when those things have, you know, one hour runtime, have a low intensity light with you as well. Um, something like a headlamp, I think, is, is kind of a, a given to me. Um, if it's not a given to you, you know, get a little mini mag light or something that's got a, a killer battery life to it. So, um, one of the things I, I, I talked about earlier was how this, the, the larger pack, the LBE pack, lacks organization. Um, so this is just a, a, a stuff sack, basically, that's going to have more of my small items in it and allow me to subcategorize, right? Some of this stuff's going to go in the top of the pack for quick access. Some of it might not be as quick access, but I don't want sharp edges tearing up my waterproofing. They don't need to be waterproofed items. I'm going to keep those things in a little kind of zip, zip bag like this. This is also a way that if I want to down my main pack, I can grab something and bring it with me. Um, but like, so my cooking kit, that's going in there. My, my extra antennas going in there. My radio's going in there. Um, my backup um, drum liner, you know, another one. I don't just count on the one that's in the, in the pack. I want to have uh, one more ready to go as well. It's so like all this stuff, you know, I'm not saying this is how it's going to live. I'm just going to get it out of the frame of the video. Um, but this is going to allow me to have some of this stuff kind of quick and easy to grab and find inside of the main body of the pack um and i can know that you know what i have that's placed into this without having everything only in that top one compartment here right i i, I want to have at least two that's just me your, your own contents and how wild you go with this is going to influence that too um it's a big thing in in the winter time is is energy uh, and, and, um, so that means calories and it also means, you know, heat and fire. Um, so on the fire side, I think, you know, fire becomes a little bit more important in the winter time. Uh, this depends on your area, your region, what you're doing. Um, but my fire kit's going to get heavier and, and, and more, um, I mean, anticipating using fire a lot more in the winter, I, I should say, than I am in the summer. So what I'll frequently do is I will add a larger cutting tool, right? I already had, I've already got the 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 uh that folding lightweight saw um for a while i also added a, a relatively lightweight small hatchet um hatchets are you know they're compact they are a little bit lighter weight but man they do not cut very fast um what i would tell you that i am a much bigger fan of um after getting out and actually swinging it is what's called a boy's axe it's a larger size it's a larger size axe um basically this weighs one pound more than this guy and I can cut wood probably five times faster with it. So if I'm anticipating doing a lot of work, I'm gonna be knocking a bunch of wood down. Um, I wanna have this larger, this larger handled ax. I can swing this faster, I can hit harder, I can cut deeper. And the other thing too, is that this is living inside of my pickup truck, right? This pack is gonna get drawn on probably more frequently for non, you know, end of the world situations than it is end of the world situations so you know branches coming down across a road and stuff like that yeah okay like this is what i want to clear some of that stuff with uh, I've, I've had that happen to me where a road was closed you know because a storm came through and knocked some some good sized branches down off of it um i'm not cutting that you know i'm not cut that cutting that stuff apart with my daily pocket knife i want to have a good tool um you know this um you're gonna get through maybe like a five inch, even that might be a little bit optimistic piece of wood with it. Um, this, you know, I, you can chip away a whole bunch and then finish it off with the saw if you need to. But like I said, this this is about a three and a quarter pound ax. This is about a two and a quarter pound. <sighs> Go with a bigger one if you if if it'll fit on your pack, right? And this will fit on this pack. <clears throat> that ax handle is not gonna stick out of the top and get snagged on everything that's coming around. It can sit right in the base here um, and it's not gonna take away a whole lot. Um, but like I said, it's going in the truck. If I don't need it, I'll throw it out. Um, but I, I think it's worth having. Fixed blade knife, definitely worth having. Um, this is the Light My Fire Knife. Um, reason it's called that, it has a fire steel built into the handle. So you can strike with the back of the knife or the blade, don't recommend it. But you've got a another way to create a spark in a very lightweight, um, affordable, these are you know roughly 30 bucks or so, fixed blade knife um, that you can do some serious work with. Um, 
So with that, um, starting fires, that's a, that's a, that's a, you know, week long course to be honest, but, uh, in, 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 in quick fashion, right? So some of the things that I've got, maybe these spur some ideas. Um, I've got some, some pieces of, of fat wood. So this is basically just resin soaked, um, kindling, right? You can buy this at a hardware store. We sell some, some pieces on the website that are just cut down and will fit inside of a, a survival tin for you. Um, you know, have a few pieces of that, shave it down into, uh, little feather, feather sticks, throw a spark on it and it's good to go. Um, these are great, simple, durable way to start a fire, right? Um, a lot of folks use those magnesium blocks. Those are what they call like a metal match. You, you get like a three second burn out of one of those. Um, these will burn for minutes. So using this almost like a candle where you get this started and then hold this and use that to start the rest of your fire, like that's, that's worth doing. Um, with that, here we've got a, uh, this is just um, a repurposed pill bottle that's jam packed full of Vaseline soaked cotton balls. Uh, I've got a lot of fire built into this. Basically, pack a whole bunch of Vaseline on top of cotton balls when you need one, fluff open, get to the center, the exposed, I'm sorry, the, the protected inner dry cotton that's on the inside, throw a spark on it and these things go up something great. Um, here we've got a lighter. And one of the modifications that I did to it is I added some some Gorilla Tape to the bottom and some 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 uh, cordage to it. The reason for this one is that I can I can kind of retain it um, if my if my hands are uh, I'm getting a little bit um, you know hypothermic my my hands aren't working as well I'm getting a little bit numb I've got something to retain it. The real reason for this is that I can put, loop some cord through it and hang it from my neck. Right, if I'm hanging it from my neck, it's not the the, the flint and stuff is a little bit more protected if it's raining or snowing and stuff like that, right? If, if the flint gets wet, it's not gonna work. The flint needs to dry out. So what I wanna be able to do is wear this basically on a necklace around my neck, inside my body, keep it warm, keep it near me, not drop it and place it on the ground where I'm gonna lose it. Um, and it also helps kind of keep it dry. So that's just a little thing I picked up too long ago um, from, from winter camping and stuff like that. But do one, do one of those and I think you'll be happy. Um, and then this is uh, just a little tin um, that I filled up with a couple of things that I like for starting fires. So a little tea light, um, like I was saying before, this will burn for literally hours. Um, so if you can get a, a candle lit and if you're, you're, you're struggling to get a, a, an actual fire lit, use the candle to help light your fire. Um, here's some just jute twine. Um, this will catch a spark pretty good. This is a, like a super emergency, you know, these like pole chain saws. For as small and cheap and light as it is, it's, it, it went in here. Not my number one, right? That's just, we're pretty far down the list if I got to use this thing. Signaling mirror, okay, fine, whatever. Here's that metal match I was talking about. If you haven't practiced with one of these, go do it. Um, you might find out just how much you actually hate this. Um, the These little folding saws, um, these are great. Um, you can use it for kind of processing your little kindling, but the, the, the big thing about them is that the, the steel that they are is, is super shoot, super sharp for throwing sparks and stuff off of ferro rods and stuff like that. So my primary purpose for this is using it as a, as a striker. Uh, it's just a bonus that I can use it to, to trim a little bit of stuff here and there. These are also some kindling tabs, tinder quick tabs. Um, they're basically impregnated with something that's likely to catch a flame. Um, a couple more chances to start a fire and a couple of ferro rods in here and then just, you know, another compass. So this is kind of the stuff that is getting added to the pack. Um, a legit winter hat's getting added. My gloves just sit in the in the truck. I use those too frequently, so I'm just going to grab those off the passenger seat when I need them. Uh, the liner gloves, they're in there. They're in there too. Um, but that's kind of the meat and potatoes of it, right? Um, I'm going to add some more food to it. You know, there's some more batteries and stuff like that. I didn't show you guys, but like I said, um, the biggest thing you, you can do for any of this stuff is always to take into account your own considerations for it. How far do you need to travel? How far, you know? Are you capable of traveling? Who needs to come with you? Um, what are the conditions that you're going to be doing this under? This might be overkill for you. Um, there, there's a lot of times where I can find myself 50, 60, 80 miles away from home year round. And so this represents my best chance at walking home if I need to. Um, but realistically, you know, what this has been several times over is a lot of useful stuff that um, I've run out and grabbed when, when something came up.
like I said, whether whether it's a, a, a some big limbs that are down across a road, somebody who's a little bit too cold and I can go and get them a jacket. Um, you know, somebody needs a drink of water, um, sitting on a cold surface, going out and getting the sleeping pad, um, you know, getting caught somewhere, not having a rain jacket, having that big pack full of stuff um, gets you gets you through a lot of situations. Um, they don't have, all have to be dramatic um, for it to be worth your while, but um, like I said, that's kind of what I wanted to uh, to show you guys. There are some re requests for that for that for a follow up video, so so here it is. Um, appreciate if you guys you know commented, told me what you think. Um, you know, if there's something that's useful or you learned, uh, it'd be cool to, to, to know that and, and that these efforts are worthwhile for you guys. So uh, let us know what you think. You know, if you want to like and subscribe, uh, I guess that helps us out too. But uh, yeah, um, keep checking in and uh, keep after it. Thanks, guys.